Hello everyone and welcome to the fourth weekly news update for Jurassic World Evolution 2. Everything you need to know about the game that came to light this week. We got the Coelophysis Species Field Guide and a couple of interesting scrumptious little tidbits on the side that I found thanks to my network of spies. So let's get into it. <laughs> This week was fairly light on info, which I think makes sense considering we got so much last week and the week before that. So we can get through this week quite quickly and then I can send you on your way to do whatever magical thing it is that you do in this world. If you like these weekly news updates, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to stay up to date on the game. By the way, a lot of people have been asking me about the park that I'm building in the background. It is the Swamp Park. Swamp. And it is finally done. So you can expect the tour to come this week. I have a full breakdown of the Coelophysis Species Field Guide that you can check out if you want the in-depth analysis and some, some more speculative things and picking up on clues. For this weekly news update, I'm sticking to the facts. The facts are we see four body colors, brown, tan, gray, and green, all with the same yellow stripe, which makes this the second pattern we are seeing for the Coelophysis. Very different from what I refer to as the null pattern that we see in these screenshots from before. It looks like all dinosaurs will have this null pattern where they actually don't have any markings and then presumably the markings get more complicated as we get higher towards the number seven. We also see the Coelophysis perform a new social behavior. Gone are the days of the dinosaur cult meetings? Question <laughs> mark? Let's hope so. This is a much more natural way for the dinosaurs to interact with each other. And we see the Coelophysis hunt down a goat. Yes, the goats are back. The hunting animation is similar to what we have in the current game, but not 100% the same. There are some tweaks. The species field guide also shows us the desert biome looking toasty. As always, the video is accompanied with an article on the forums, and that is where we learn more interesting information about the species. Coelophysis prefers a large area of open space it can run around in, but will also need some forest in its environment. This confirms that a bunch of trees and cacti in the desert biome qualifies as a forest area. I got some comments from people concerned that animals with a forest need can't be held in the desert biome, but that is clearly not the case. A plethora of cacti can make a forest to fulfill those needs. Coelophysis doesn't cohabitate well with other carnivorous dinosaurs. They prefer spending time with their own kind and like to stay together in groups. However, this species will not pack hunt. Considering they won't go after prey animals that are bigger than them, pack hunting isn't really necessary. Because they don't go after animals that are bigger than them, they can be kept in an enclosure with larger herbivores and they will likely leave each other alone. Overall, Coelophysis seems to be a low maintenance dinosaur. With access to water, open spaces, a bit of forest and plenty of friends, your Coelophysis should thrive and stay relatively calm. One of my viewers, actually multiple, but this person was the first, noticed something scientifically accurate in the species field guide. Coco Loco Burb and if that's not a great name, I don't know what is, said, his hands aren't broken. Let me first say this real quick, all dinosaurs are female. I know I mess up in videos a lot and I accidentally call them a he or an it, so so I'm not saying Coco Loco Burb, any excuse to say that name, <laughs> is implying that they are male, but so, so many people still comment, Oh, I think the difference between these skins is sexual dimorphism and this behavior looks like a mating ritual or that one looks smaller than the rest. I think it's a juvie. And I hate to break the bubble, but that has been proven to be incorrect. Please, please get those hopes and expectations out of your head because it has already been confirmed by Frontier. All dinosaurs are female, all dinosaurs are adults, and there will be no breeding. But back to Coco Loco Burp's point, <laughs> that name, man. But back to Coco Loco Burp's point, the hands aren't broken, meaning the arms aren't pronated. Dinosaurs couldn't pronate their arms. They didn't have the bunny paws with the hands hanging down from the wrist, palms facing down. 
Who am I kidding? You know this. As Coco Loco Bird pointed out, the Coelophysis holds its arms correctly in the species field guide with the palms facing inwards. Which blows the minds of the purists. The purists have been having a rough time in this franchise, so I understand the happiness when you get thrown a bone. Two bones, actually, the radius and the ulna. The Coelophysis did have pronated hands in the screenshots, so perhaps they updated the rig and model to turn the hands the right way. However, Coelophysis is a new dinosaur, not previously established in the Jurassic Park slash world universe. So I would say do not expect them to correct the arms of the Velociraptor. That is all the news on the Coelophysis. Next up is information hidden away in the forum replies that was unearthed thanks to UT the Huali. If you want to join my network of spies to help make sure that these weekly news updates have all the info, I invite you to just DM me on Discord and send me a screenshot if you find something interesting and newsworthy. Anyone who's part of the Evolution Square Discord can DM me without sending a friend request first. The invite link is in the description box down below. Keep in mind, I do get a lot of messages as you might imagine, so I can't respond to every single one. But if you help me find info, you get a shout out in these videos. So UT the Huali let me know that Frontier talked about water placement in the replies on the forum. And I don't think I need to stress how important water placement is with the Mosasaurus on the horizon. Dino Wolf asked, nothing discussing water and its placement was mentioned. Will it get its own focus, meaning its own feature focus, or is it being worked on? I truly hope it's like Planet Zoo where you dig a hole and then fill it. To which Jens Erik, the community manager, replied, Water placement will be similar to the first game where you paint it into the landscape. This news is somewhat problematic, considering, as I said, we have the Mosasaurus coming into the game, and ideally, we'd be able to build a natural lagoon to house it in, instead of plopping down a pre-made tank, like, like a building, essentially. In the first game, water had only one depth and no volume, so small dinosaurs would literally just walk underwater. That is not something we want to see in the sequel, so this is concerning news. However, there is still a slight sparkle of hope. Similar is not necessarily the same. And when we look at a game like Prehistoric Kingdom, the water placement works sort of similar to Jurassic World Evolution in the sense that you also just paint it onto the landscape. It's not like Planet Zoo, where you dig down and then fill it with water. However, the water placement tool in Prehistoric Kingdom has different depth settings. So potentially, Jurassic World Evolution 2 could introduce something like that. It would still be similar to the original game, where you just paint water onto the landscape, but it would leave the door open for managing depth and creating custom lagoons for the Mosasaurus. We have to keep our eyes open for this and hope for more definitive news in the near future. I will say it's not looking good in that regard, but you know me, I like remaining optimistic until proven wrong. On face value, the news is just water placement will be similar to Jurassic World Evolution 1. You can interpret that as you will, I just wanted to clarify that there is some wiggle room there in terms of interpretation. In other news, the rest of the cast of characters is not yet announced. Frontier confirms we will have time controls, namely pause and fast forward. This is something Andrew Reiner already talked about in his Game Informer article, but clearly people still have questions about it. Contrary to what some leaks might claim, the confirmed species list is still the same as last week. We are still at 15 out of over 75 species confirmed. And finally, someone asked about modding possibilities for the sequel and Frontier gave their nothing to announce standard answer. I think it's safe to assume mod support will not happen. It'll probably be similar to what we have in the current game where they held it off as long as they could probably because of licensing obligations, and then eventually condone it. That is all of the news for this week. Thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing, and until next time, enjoy the anticipation. Okay.